everyone, my name is Ali. I'm an environmental engineer and today I'm going to talk about a couple of tips that I have for taking and passing the FE environmental exam. For me, I took it and I passed on the very first try using these tricks that I'm going to share with you right now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go on to the NCEES website and actually sign up for your test. I ended up signing up with about three months of study time in between uh, when I decided to take the test and when I actually took the test. Originally, I was supposed to take the FE exam immediately after I graduated, but that was in 2020 and due to world circumstances, that plan was derailed. So when you're on the NCEES website, you're going to want to look out for certain things. Uh, firstly, you're going to want to check the list of acceptable calculators. I ended up taking my exam with this one, the, T, was it the TI36X Pro. Um, this one was great for me. It had all the buttons that I needed. Um, there was nothing really, I know that some calculators, they won't have certain buttons that you actually need. Um, I think ES is one of the ones that, for the specific to environmental that it kind of is missing in a couple of calculators, so you'll wanna check out for that, but this is the one that I used, I thought it was great. You're really gonna to wanna to make sure that you're using the right calculator. At least for me, when I actually went to the testing facility, a person brought the wrong calculator and kind of, it was just, it's already a very stressful scenario and um, you don't wanna add any kind of stress to yourself. So I actually, I brought this calculator and then I brought another calculator which didn't have as many buttons. Um, but it was also accepted by NCEES in the event that something went horribly wrong with my original calculator, I had the backup. Another thing I would really recommend relative to calculators is you're going to want to either if you have to purchase, purchase a calculator that's accepted by the NCEES website and then study exclusively or continue school exclusively with that calculator so that you really learn your way around the calculator. For me, um, I actually had a different calculator that I I used pretty much my entire college career and then as I kind of signed up for this test I realized I needed a different one and I had to kind of learn my way around the new calculator so I would definitely recommend figure out your calculator situation and use it exclusively to study so that at the bare like while you're taking the test you're not taking away time just trying to figure out where certain buttons are the next few things you're going to want to do on the NCES website is actually purchase the FE a practice exam. This is the one that I had. I would highly, highly recommend that you get this test. It seems like a no-brainer and it's specifically, it's created by NCEES. Um, so you're going to want to go ahead and purchase that at the same time as you sign up for your test. And you're going to want to go in and download the FE handbook. They do give you an option to buy the printed handbook. I wouldn't really recommend this because at least at the testing facility, I'm pretty sure it's standard, but at the testing facility that I went to, the handbook is on the computer. The whole test is on the computer. So if you kind of have the printout version, at least the way my brain works, you're gonna kind of learn where on the page formulas are and things like that and it won't actually help you in the long run because you're gonna have to be scrolling and doing like um what is it like control f and finding things on a computer format so i wouldn't really recommend printing it out also you're wasting paper um and in the end of on the end of the day your test is going to be on a screen it's better same as the calculator it's better that you learn how to search and type and find things in the same format that will be on the test just so that you can start um, getting better and faster at doing that. So in terms of materials that I used to uh, study, I purchased the FE uh, practice exam book. Here we have a breakdown of the different sections that'll be on your test, the amount of questions, the different topics um, that will be covered within different subjects, as well as practice exam questions. And in the back, there are some thorough solutions for all of those questions. Another book that I purchased to study is the Anthem Environmental Engineering Review. Uh, this same thing, it has sample questions and solutions in the back. For this one, you do have to be careful. It's even mentioned in the Amazon reviews that some of the answers are not correct. 
um, in this in this exam here. So you just have to be um, cognizant of that. Uh, in terms of the types of questions and material covered, it is very similar to the types of questions that you'll be encountering on the FE exam. So I still recommend the book. I also purchased a big pack of recycled printer paper. This is what I prefer to use for um, studying just because when you do have longer questions and things like that, it's just easier to kind of write it all out in a sheet and not have to worry about lines and things like that. Uh, like I said, I went for a, a recycled paper um, and it's just easier to kind of like write everything out on there. Two of the YouTube channels that I found extremely helpful while I was studying were uh, Engini Year, <laughs> I'll show you guys a picture of it, as well as Direct Hub. Um, these two channels have like very in-depth solutions for different kind of questions that you'll encounter on the FE exam. With I regards to my study plan, in terms of hours, I broke it down as I had a kind of a minimum of one to two hours every single day. For me, I was studying after work, so um, I would make sure that between getting off of work and going to sleep, I did at least one to two hours of studying every single day. And then on the weekend, I would pick one day of the weekend and I would do a full eight hour session. As you get closer to the exam, this kind of naturally picks up as you get more nervous um, so that did kind of pick up especially in like the two or three weeks before the test definitely doing more than one or two hours a day um, and probably like both days of the weekend were just strictly devoted or like eight hours were strictly devoted to studying for the FE exam with regards to what I actually did, I went through questions in these in these books. I went through all of those YouTube example questions, um, and I kind of just wrote everything out. This is like a huge chunk of papers that I used to study. Um, and then a couple of things, just I know that the intro to environmental engineering textbook, I'll put a picture of it, um, they have questions throughout the chapters that are kind of, it, I'm not sure what year the book was, um, published, but it is general stuff like you're having air quality, you're having fluid mechanics, that stuff is very um, standard and unfluctuating. Um, so I would definitely try to refer to that or any kind of questions that you might have from your time in school if you if you have access to that. If not, um, I didn't have a lot of access to my to my past materials. I really just relied on these two books and on everything that I could find on YouTube. Um, another thing that I did was with the practice exam, about a month before my test, I took a full-fledged exam. So I went through from that exact book, I timed myself and I went through the whole exam. All I, I, It was two sections, so you have half the time for half the test and then half the time for the rest of the test. Um, so I just kind of went through like a simulation as if I was actually taking the exam, timed, everything like that. Um, that was about one month before the test, just to kind of know where my weak points were and to really have enough time, so a whole month, enough time to really fine tune those areas where I could use a lot more work. And then I retook the exam with time about two weeks before just to see where I like where I improved, where I could still work on. Another thing that I did, which I think was super helpful, was I filled out these index cards with different equations or formulas that were likely to come up with the different sections. So for example, here I have fluid mechanics, I have the number of questions, and then I have all of the different formulas that I came across or that I think would be likely to come up in the exam. And I did this for every single section. So for water resources, I have a couple of definitions here. Um, for solid and hazardous waste, I have a bunch of uh, formulas there. The pink was that I didn't understand it very well, so I needed to kind of memorize that. And I do think that you should take a little bit of time to try to memorize some formulas just to save you some time on the actual exam. If there's something, if there's a question that you've gone through a hundred times, you might as well just memorize it because if in the exam you have to spend time like searching for the formula that's taking away from time that you could be actually problem solving. 
Another thing that I did, which I think was pretty helpful, just in terms of like uh, visualizing and kind of um, conceptualizing what it's going to be like on the test. Um, so when you go into the FE uh, practice book, and I think on the website they also have this list, they have sort of breakdowns for every section. So here we have fluid mechanics and hydraulics, and they have A, uh, statics, B, closed circuits, C, open channels, and things like that. And they kind of have like a breakdown of everything that could be covered within the different sections. So math, of course, math can be a trillion different things. But here in the actual uh, breakdown, they have analytical geometry and trigonometry, algebraic equations and roots, calculus, and numerical methods. And then there's some parentheses and a little bit more information. So what I actually did was I went through each of these sections and kind of looked at the words basically like looked at the kind of um, concepts that they said would be within that section and f like kind of formulated or visualized in my head what kind of problems are associated with those types of um, like uh, topics or more yeah topics um, so for example runoff equation that's like you have your inputs you have your outputs and you have that kind of formula that you can set up um, I would just kind of like visualize that in my mind for each of these um, different um, like topics that could come up so that'll kind of just help you on the exam so that when you see different things like that you can kind of say like oh, okay algebra and then go through i mean algebra would be really easy but <laughs> like whatever topic and kind of go through from there just to kind of set your mind up with the flow that you're going to be experiencing during the exam and i think as a part of that it's important to kind of have some formulas memorized have some idea of okay if i'm in the fluid mechanics section what are the type like what am i going to see what are the options um, and that will help you that list from the practice exam will help you to kind of understand what might pop up and then prepare yourself mentally for what you do when that stuff comes up lastly i'd like to mention that something that you can kind of repeat to yourself something that i repeated to myself to help calm calm my nerves a bit was that the test can be taken repeatedly um, so you don't have to tell your employer you don't have to tell anybody <laughs> that you're going out for the exam um, you can kind of just keep it to yourself and see what happens and if you have to take it again or three times so be it Alrighty, so those have been my tips and tricks for studying for the FE uh, environmental exam. Uh, I hope that you all found this helpful. Good luck on your exams. Um, and if you have any kind of other questions or other suggestions, please feel free to leave them down in the description box below. I would be more than happy to answer specific questions or comments uh, down in, in, the, uh, in the comment section below. In the site description, or oh, not site description, in the description box below, uh, I'll be sure to list off some of these resources that I've mentioned, as well as the pictures of the uh, flashcards. Thank you so much for watching.